Hi everyone, welcome back. It's my AK Swedish Whiskey Girl. And today we are here with a King's Barnes. This is Valcomi and it's an on age statement. It's a 46% ABV. It is a lowland single malt Scotch whiskey because King's Barnes is located in Fife. They also use locally grown barley from Fife and natural colour, non chill filtered. And this has been matured in 100% <laughs> exclusively in American Oak X Sherry casks. And I really like the bottle design. And you can see here, it's kind of, what's it called? Like texture thing on the bottle is because if you go to the distillery, you can see kind of the remains of an old ducat, which I think is quite cool. Ducats? I don't know how you say it, but yeah. I've been to the distillery, really lovely tour. Um, they of course also have Darn Lace Gin there, so if you want to do a gin and whiskey tour, it's a good one because you have both in the same place. And yeah, if you want to read more about that, I have it put it up on my blog. But let's have a little look on the whiskey. I think this is the second one I've tried from King's Barnes. Um, they're kind of original release. Does that have a name? For me, from memory, it was a lot of bananas, um, but this one's slightly different in character. So let's start by having a look on the nose. Definitely has this kind of grassy, sweet, sherry note. It feels quite dense and quite greeny, like you can get the barley note in there. Barley, a little bit of soft wood, which is probably belonging to that kind of sherry note. I do think the sherry is Oloroso, so this kind of a slightly drier style than for example your PX. There's a little bit of a recent note mixed in with the woodiness. It's not overly sherry, it just has like a touch of it and the kind of grassy sweetness is the first thing I'm getting. Oh, my nose is actually itching a little bit. Um, yeah, so that grassy sweetness is the kind of main thing I'm getting at the moment. A little bit murky in that recin woodiness. But yeah, let's have a little taste, slunge back. And I think I forgot to say, this retails are about £50 as well. Mm. <laughs> I was going to say that I... The last time I tried it, I didn't... I kind of just tried it, I didn't really think about the kind of analysis of it which is what I'm doing more when I sit down and do these reviews. But it's, um, for me, I think I prefer the palette because the nose is kind of, or maybe I'm just a bit blocked because it's pollen. On the nose, it's more that kind of grassy sweetness. But on the palate, it kind of opens up a little bit more. But it's quite sweet, I would say, with fruitiness and a woodiness and all these things that kind of open up. Like, it's like a flower, so you get like the, the bud on the nose, but then when you taste the palette, it kind of just blooms. So yeah, <laughs> I'm a little bit, if I seem a bit distracted today, it's because I'm trying to learn everything from my W set level 2 in spirits, which I have an exam on Friday. And it's just a lot to keep track of, not just whiskies, cognac, armagnac, rum, tequila, mascal. So my brain's a bit full of information. But let's have another sip. Also has this thick mouthfeel on the palate. A little bit of cinnamon spice. I'm trying to decide what I think the fruitiness is. There's something tropical, I think, definitely. But mixes in with kind of ripe nectarine or peach maybe. So it's like pineapple, peach, plums. <laughs> It's still fresh, I would say. I don't think it's super grassy on the palate. More so on the nose, but it's... It has like the fruitiness, but it also has the sweetness, and then it has the woodiness and the spice. So it's like a lot of... Like at least four big flavors, 
that all kind of collide in, I think, a really nice kind of explosion of flavour. It has a bitterness that tastes nice. So sometimes the bitter element for me is more um, an element to it that sometimes belongs to the woodiness or that sometimes belongs to like a, an orange zestiness or something like that. But the taste of the bitter note in this is really pleasant. It's like an orange pith meets Yeah, to me it's it's like an orange bitterness. Let me have another sip actually. Mm, the bitterness is a little bit grassy. My orange pith and then the spice comes in there as well and it's definitely holds on to your palate unless the flavour really lingers, especially the bitter kind of orange note. Makes my mouth feel a little bit dry as well, but still this kind of memory of the, the fruitiness makes it quite juicy. I think, without having it to compare right next to each other, I think from memory I would say the original release, oh, I just can't remember if it's called something, but the one that is like the kind of core range that isn't the Balcomi, that is just unpeated loveliness, it's like kind of bananas and tropical fruits. I think if you thought that was a little bit too youthful, I think this might be something that you might enjoy more. Even though it has a youthful freshness about it, I think it's, if you're not used to exbarban spirits, non-age statements or something that feels quite, like the, the spirit is quite present, don't know if that makes sense but it's just when you add like a sherry cask you can usually get a, an extra layer of flavor because the sherry has a very distinct character and even though this isn't a sherry monster you just get another layer to balance the youthful mess you usually have in a non-age statement especially from a young distillery like King's Barnes that maybe suits more palettes I can't say if I like the Balcomi or the other release the best because I haven't compared them. I know I really, really enjoy the... the <laughs> it annoys me so much that I can't think of what it's called, but they're kind of standard core range release. But I also think this is lovely on the, the palette. I need to do a comparison at some point. But I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you tried the Balcomi? Have you tried the other one? Have you compared them? Do you have a preference? Are you excited about King's Barnes? I know a lot of people are because they live in or near Fife and the Lowlands Distilleries category is of course growing, but usually one of the ones that is a little bit, I don't know, hidden. It tends to be Speyside or Highlands or Isla this or Campbelltown that most people kind of have like, oh, I, this is my favorite region. Not a lot of people say that about the Lowlands. But I think it might change eventually <laughs> the more distilleries we get because I mean now we have quite a lot of them but yeah like I said I'd love to hear your thoughts on King's Barnes and which one's your favorite uh, please put that in the comments here below and of course if you have liked the video and would like to support us then leaving a thumbs up and maybe subscribing would be so helpful or if you would like to use my affiliate links the next time you're shopping with either Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. All those links are of course also linked in the description here below as well as links to my other social channels if you're curious about those. And before we go, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. It's great to have you guys with me on my whiskey journey. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slanjava, Skoal! <laughs>